Thank you for tuning in for another episode of this podcast. In fact, this is the first episode of season two. (laughs) I was so excited to start this podcast back in January and still feel just incredibly grateful to the chefs that helped me get it out there and make it happen. So I have five episodes out so far. So if you haven't, please go take a listen. But when I was thinking about what I wanted to bring into season two, I knew I wanted to record enough episodes to release them closer together. So I took the summer off to record and did so with some incredible guests. I am so excited. And I also knew that I wanted to bring y'all the video versions of the pod. So with that, a little drum roll, please. Table five has landed a YouTube channel. It is really fun. I'm very excited. So you can either watch the episodes on YouTube or on the Spotify app. Now, I'm not fancy enough yet to customize my YouTube channel URL. I need 100 subscribers for that. So please go watch and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And until then, you can go to the Table 5 Instagram at Table5Pod to use the link in my bio because there's no way I'm going to be able to say what that URL is. It's way too complicated. And I can't wait to hear what y'all think about this added feature. Okay, so back to basics. You know I love to give a restaurant shout out at the top of each pod. And because I'm still just reeling from my trip to Italy in May, I'm going to start with a place in Florence. I have already sent multiple people and heard back from them that it was enjoyed by them as much as I enjoyed it. So I figured this was probably a pretty good place to start. And also, I mean, according to Instagram, everyone added Italy to their bucket list this year. (laughs) I mean, including myself. So hopefully this comes in handy for some. And the best part is this place is a threefer. You heard that right. They have a wine bar, a restaurant, and a cafe slash bakery slash shop. Okay, so I'm not going to pretend to know Italian, so bear with me while I say this. But (laughs) the wine bar is Il Santino. The restaurant is Santo Bevatore, I think. And the cafe, bakery, slash adorable little shop is S Forno. And you know it's good because this group was recommended to me by our lovely friend of the pod, Chef Antonia Lafaso. So you're not just taking my word for it. I definitely posted up at this wine bar more than I need to admit (laughs) and enjoyed the restaurant multiple times. But every time was so special. And I think that's obviously why you go back. Like you get a feeling, you know, it's great. And that's what wants you, like, that's what makes you want to keep going back. They have a great wine list. There's, you know, when you sit at the bar, you're sitting just right there with the bartender. Shout out Johnny. And they have great cheese and charcuterie and little snacks. And you're just having an interesting and fun conversation. There's also a little table so you can sit there too. And they have a cute little outside section that kind of is in front of both the bar and the restaurant with little tables on the cobblestone street. Oh, I love it so much. Um, And at dinner... The pastas just can't be beat. It was incredible every time. The food and wine never disappoints. But that's one of my favorite things about traveling and exploring cuisine is going, you know, where the locals go. And that's how they treat you here. Like one of their own. Also, got to give a shout out to my guy, Michelle, at the restaurant because he just made every experience 10 times better. Just the coolest. So if you go, say hi. So not only was the food good, but I kept going back for that hospitality, for the vibe of it all. So if you're heading to Florence, you must add this to your list. It is just incredible. And the shop was adorable. I bought a little hand towel. I had some of the best cheesecake of my life. And it's just a lovely experience, no matter which which one you go to or if you go to all three. Okay, so now for my next guest. I was so excited to be getting to chat with these guys that we just kind of jumped right in. So I wanted to give a little backstory. 
I used to be a casting producer and met Ezra and Adiv, as in D, as you'll hear them refer to each other, many years ago when I was casting a show, which oddly enough, none of us can remember what that was. They have since moved into the culinary space, hosting shows like Southern Road Trip with the Potash Twins, Bravo's Beats and Bites, and their latest Takeout Twins. They are <laughs> clearly twins, identical twins, jazz musicians, TV personalities, and food enthusiasts. We talk about their music career, their food journey as the protégés of celebrity chef Andrew Zimmern, our shared love of Waffle House, and so much more. I love them. So please enjoy the Potash Twins. Just like so exciting for so many reasons. <laughs> we're, we're equally as excited and so I, honored to be a part of the Table Five podcast. I mean, I'm thrilled. I feel like this is like a blast from the past, and I should recognize this considering this is how we met, but it's so fun. Oh my God. I love yeah, it. I love it. And I love the striped shirt today. And I guess I didn't get the memo. No, you didn't. I mean, way to be not with it. Hey, right. you know what? I messed up. Next time we come on, I'm wearing a striped shirt. <laughs> I won't wear I won't wear stripes. I'll wear solid black. Yeah, neither will I. You missed it. This I guess I, I just I didn't tap into the stylist memo. I this was a one time opportunity, and I would say you failed. <laughs> and I failed. And I, <laughs> I think I'll be invited back, but I don't know about you. I mean, we'll see how the rest of this goes before we make yeah. any rush decisions. <laughs> agreed, agreed. As you should, we would expect that from you. Oh my god! First of all, this is just I was saying. I'm like, this is crazy because I met them doing a Skype interview, and I cannot remember what that was for, but. It was a twin show, like eight years ago, right? I I vaguely remember this. I don't even, I know that we did do an interview for a twin show. And, and our, it was like over Skype. Y'all were living in New York, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. It was a long time wow, ago. What a, what a blast from the past. Such a blast from the past. So I was trying to think of it and I'm like, I don't remember. I just remember it was about twins, which makes sense. But I don't remember anything else about it. But I did once go to... Twinsburg, Ohio for that twin convention. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yes. Never and, been there for that. Yeah. And my sister was like, oh, it was probably that twin convention. I'm like, no, no, no. They were not a part of that. <laughs> yeah. Oh. We've done one twin thing before and it wasn't, it was, it was in China and it was like this America's Got Talent type of thing, but it was oh, yeah. twins from all over the world and we were the American twins. And they, everybody there was like, well, you guys must be familiar with the Twinsburg, Ohio thing. We're like, no, literally, we've never been there. We've yeah, that was there. honestly, that was like the first time we'd ever heard about that. Yeah, I mean, it's also rare to like do twin things. It's also, that, that experience for me was very bizarre. I went for work to right. cast a show. I wasn't there with my twin. I don't know if you remember. <laughs> I actually have a twin. I don't know if you remember, but. Oh, yeah, right. Yes, fraternal, so different, but. It was a very weird experience. No, yeah. I mean, mad respect to Twinsburg people, but it was an interesting time. <laughs> we, we feel like we have a, like almost love hate relationship with the, with other, with the identity of t being twins. Yeah, or like, yeah. Cause it's, it's something that's so like unique to you. And then it's like, oh, there, here are all these other people who are like doing it similarly, but also not. But then you get to this such weird situation where like being a twin is their only like identity. Right. And for us, it's like, we are a bunch of things that, and we happen and to, to be, be twins, twins, but like being twins isn't like the only thing we're about. I love that y'all both are like at the same time said, and we happen to be twins. <laughs> right, right. No, and we love each other and work together and blah, blah, blah. But like, you know, for being at things with a bunch of other twins, you see that like, there's not a lot of depth to their... Uh, the the team identity i would say right and so it just it's just an interesting thing to be in and we usually aren't around that that kind of situation yeah that's what it was for me like i was there for work and was with a colleague who we were kind of having to act like we were twins for a second just to get to certain okay. places and i'm like this is uh, this is weird because now the only thing anyone cares about is like the twindom of it all right and it's like no one it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what you do it doesn't matter where you're coming from it's like are you twins how how twinny are you what's the twin story and it's like this is a lot yeah totally yeah i totally i couldn't even we, imagine. yeah we It'd feel be twin the, overload we feel sure. the exact same way about that oh my god i know i actually text my twin sister from there and i'm like 
a part of me really wants you to come here and understand what I'm talking about. And a part of me knows I'll never come back here. So yeah. you just have to trust my stories. Yeah. Yeah. When you go in knowing you're never going to go back. Yeah. <laughs> what does that say? What does that say? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Well, I guess we've already started with the obvious. Y'all are identical twins. Yeah. So tell me just like, obviously that's been a huge part of your, A, your life clearly, but also your career. I mean, like being twins is a thing that you have this like signature look, you have your same frames. Y'all are like these cool jazz guys. Like what, I mean, tell me about like being identical well, twins. So the, the first thing that I want to make clear is like, we never were like, we should do something together. Like we never, that was never on our radar even. Uh, it was just naturally that we gravitated towards like the exact same passions that we were like, oh, you know what? Like at this point, we should just do this together. But, but I will add, we were equally surprised when the result became right. that we both liked the same things. Right. Like we, you know, when you're younger and you're twins, you're trying to do something to set yourself apart from the other twins. Totally. But then when that both when both of those things became playing like brass instruments, you're like, all right, this is shaping out to be interesting. <laughs> And then, and then, you know, we both obviously were big into food and food was a huge part about us growing up in Nebraska. And we grew up keeping kosher. We grew up being vegetarians and the, and it just, and then we moved to New York city. And obviously when you're that way and you move to New York city from Nebraska, the first thing you're going to do is be like, I want to try a million new things I've never yeah. had. So it, it was weird how like that happened, but it happened just kind of organically, which right. I think something that's intriguing to like our situation specifically but yeah it was definitely never something that we consciously were like no matter what it is we're and there was team, it just kind of happened and there was yeah. like never a conversation about it which i yeah. think might be the most twin thing to ever happen right <laughs> totally. like, we're just this and we never talked about it <laughs> never talked about it and the, you, don't, you don't have to that's yeah. the best part of being yeah. a twin we all, my sister and i always say that we're fraternal a minute apart look nothing alike our lives are nothing alike, but we're best friends. I mean, I have her initials on this bracelet. Like, oh, I, right. you know, right. I'm like, she's just like my favorite person, but we do not have to speak. Right. And I'm like, that is, everyone's always like, what's your, you know, like, do you feel it when she falls? Like, do you know when, so, and I'm like, yeah, no, we don't really have that. Unfortunately, I don't know if people have it. We don't, but we don't oh, have to speak. That even, I think that that's well, BS. And I'll, say the, I'll say the worst thing about being an identical twin is that everybody wants to talk about it. So like every waiter, every cashier, people that walk up and see that we're twins. And I know like we deserve it because we wear the same glasses and stuff. <laughs> but like it's, we have the same conversation 50 times a day. Totally. And it will happen no matter what situation we're in. And then it's also like someone is a twin. Like someone who is a twin or their like friend is a twin has to come I up. I mean, and everybody, everybody has a twin connection. And I'll tell you, so maybe the worst burden of it is we're really like happy, fun people all the time. But after like traveling for a long, after like a really long day of traveling and you like go to check into a hotel and then that person wants to have the twin conversation <laughs> with you. It's like, you know, I'd love to have this conversation in like four hours after I've taken a shower and a nap. Yeah. But right now, like I just don't have time. For this. You're like, let me check in. I'll come down. We'll have this whole twin yeah. convo. We'll give you like, a drink voucher. We we are, have the we're literally all about mobile check-in to avoid that conversation. Yeah, totally. I love that. And then I, of course I start the podcast with like, tell me about being identical twins. Totally. I'm a twin. Yeah. <laughs> no, we we like love it. And at the same time, it's like this it just happens. It just totally. happens. So we're I, and I should probably, since we're recording this audio and video, I should probably have y'all say which is which and like give a wave and then yeah. at least people who are watching it can know <laughs> totally i'm a div i'm in green wearing the stripes ezra on the black t-shirt and the blue hat <laughs> um, <laughs> i love it okay and then i do want to ask you i mean y'all do have this kind of signature style you know like you have this look was was that something y'all planned or no Again, it's, it's something we completely like fell into. We had, we were doing a deal, a glasses deal and the designer Jason is like the coolest guy ever. And we were like going through the, all the glasses we could pick. And like, I picked like a boring, like brown, like tortoise shell glasses. And you picked a, something similar to that. Yeah, I picked like a blue pair. Yeah, and, wasn't, like, anything and he wild. comes up and he brings these ones over and I'm, I'm like, no way. And as is like, no way. And he's like, well, if you both wear them, then maybe it will like kind of break that wall of like they're individually crazy, but together they would be less. And we put them on and we're like, all right, well, we'll try it for today. And then we were performing at the Minnesota State Fair of all places. 
for like 30,000 people. And every Instagram comment were like the two people with the heart eyes. And we were like, you know what? I think we picked up on something. With yeah. That. You're like, okay, this is a thing. Yeah. And now so we've we been, and now we've been trapped behind uh, them ever since. <laughs> We, we love i think we've grown to love them totally but they're a thing you can never really turn off i mean we have a lot of other pairs but uh these are kind of like our on camera on stage pair yeah and, and, and i mean I guess we wear them around town have, i suppose yeah but. we have we have like everyday pair then we have like really shiny ones yeah yeah <laughs> ones that have transition lenses in them and wow the and they're all the red and green ones yeah yeah, yeah. we probably have like 30 each of these you have the exact opposite prescriptions so yeah. i'm nearsighted and he's farsighted it's the it's weird yeah isn't that well also it I'm is left- wild i will say that is wild i'm yeah. left-handed and he's right-handed so there seems to be some sort but, of weird are you other- mirror twins uh, we've never really figured no. that out but also i feel like i should have like i do things left-handed but i write right-handed so he well, tends to, and i cook tell like, tell her the first time we'd ever heard about me the mirror twins, oh right, right. um the, we were with the Property Brothers, and they were saying, like, how they're mirror twins. And uh, and Drew was like, I'm left-handed, and I'm more like this. And Drew and uh, Jonathan was like, I'm right-handed, and I'm the nicer one. And I'm like, wait, I'm right-handed, and I'm the nicer one. <laughs> and it was just like, they kept layering things and things and things. And I'm like, oh, my God. It got to the God. point where it was like maybe after 30 minutes of, like, going down this thing, me and Drew were, we're like, like exactly identical. the same kind of personality type. And D and Jonathan were like the same personality type. And the hand and like we're, he, we're they the were same. both right handed. We uh, Jonathan or Drew and I were both left handed, and it just kept going. And we were like, there might be something. And he was like, and he was like, you're the one that drives, right? And I'm like, yeah, I'm the one that drives. <laughs> and it just kept going and it kept for like going. thirty minutes. It kept. Going. Oh my god, that's my favorite. That yeah. is so funny when you said the thing about you're the one who drives because my sister and I like we're I mean we're not identical again, but she always drove always like she liked to drive she was always driving she she manned the radio the I'm driving I mean she was in charge of the car and when we graduated college I was a semester behind and I was driving back there for the first time after four years of going of there like never driving. I was like where am I going I got lost I called my dad three times he was like um is some I don't understand like you've been going <laughs> to school there for four years I'm like I know but Lauren always drives and I just kind of sit back and relax so is your sister the more like Uh, this and i'm only saying this because this is the way that i am is she more like logistically brained and controlling yeah maybe i'm a little i'm I'm definitely more of like the creative a little bit like whatever but she's also her business now is creative yeah i would say she's more logistic she's very practical yes yes that's how he is and i'm the one that's like Like he he creative sort of slightly more aloof but also like i'm like i tech do a lot of texting and social media he doesn't even carry a wallet like i have to carry a wallet because he doesn't like i mean like what with both of your licenses and stuff in it oh yes yes i'm dying i do that i mean but like when we split up i I'll, have I, no, I get those things i back. like hand it to him yeah. he, i check it out of the library i'll like hand it to him and i'll hand him money and i'll be like this is what you can do you're like okay so you're leaving me tonight here's your wallet this is your license yeah, this yeah. is how much you can spend on your credit problem. card yeah <laughs> okay so i wanted to ask y'all how old are y'all now 28 28 yeah mm-hmm. and do you live in new york la, LA or palm springs LA, la and palm springs yeah we have a place in Century City, and we have a house in Palm Springs. And depending on when we're traveling or we're not traveling, we're always in one of those places. I mean, not a bad setup. No, no we love no. it. It's pretty great. <laughs> we're from Nebraska, so we need breathing room and space. So that's why we bought the house in Palm Springs. We bought it like right before COVID. So we like it just. Oh, in Brook, Brook is our is the house behind oh, us. Oh, how funny! Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brooke Williamson. Yeah, yeah. Brooke Williamson. Oh, I love the that. The funny thing is we never see her here. We always see her doing things in LA and we're like, hey neighbor. Oh, that's so funny. You know, obviously we've talked about the twin thing enough, but do y'all always get along? Yeah, we've never fought really. Like we 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 just are so similar that like when one of us is mad, we're probably both mad. <laughs> yeah. So it's like we're not mad at each other, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> no, we've all always really like got got along really well like that's p- part of the secret sauce of being able to work together is it's just we've never gotten in each other's way we both no. kind of like i said before like we know each other's strengths and weaknesses and we like protect each other yeah right? and, and i think like that's just a, r- a really important thing for our dynamic is like knowing 
what I should do, what he should do. I mean, especially on camera, right. like it, doing a lot of the on camera stuff, like knowing where his strengths are versus where mine are. Yeah. And, and when I can sense with my, you know, sixth twin sense, like, right. oh, let me jump in here. But, you know, that's something. And same for me. And like we also know, musically the same way. Yeah. Like on camera, we always know like when to buy the other one time. So that we we picked up on that right away, and that was that has been so helpful, especially with cooking. You always need to like get another totally. seconds to get to flip something or whatever. Um, so that's been one of the strengths of that. And then musically, like we know what situations the other one will succeed or fail in, so we kind of don't put ourselves in those positions where we know the other one won't do well. Right. So right. it's just we've you know we just know each won't well, do are, well or one would be like more, really good in that yeah situation. one would be better in that situation yeah we, we kind of like tag team on that yeah um so we have a lot of experience of like just knowing the dynamic and knowing right. the proper situation to like right. be in really yeah and we're gonna get to like all of the food stuff but i wanted to like just set up like so obviously you do, you've been working together for years. You're both musicians and also now in this food space, really bridging the gap between the two. But tell me, how did the, how did the, the music career start? Like y'all were in Nebraska. Do you have other siblings? No, no. it's just, we, no. Were, we were obviously a handful to our parents. Like that. <laughs> They're like, let's go again. <laughs> right. um, um, yeah. So you grew up in Nebraska and then I, I know, I remember you both went to school in New York, but different, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, different schools. We both lived on the, we lived in the same place in the Upper West Side. Well, so, for like the later years. Of it, yeah. yeah, I mean, ugh, well, the years that we were like not together, it was bad. Oh. Um, but, at, well, we both gravitated towards horns. Um, we both got like good, we were like competitive about it at the beginning. So we were both practicing a lot to like see how far each one of us would It go. was the classic thing where it was like, oh yeah, I practiced eight hours today. What'd you do? And I practiced like, nine. Yeah. Or, and, or like and I practiced five practice. and then I have to go in there and do another three. And it was like that for probably like six years until we were, you know, it just got to that point where we felt really comfortable on our instruments. And then when we were sophomores in high school, we snuck backstage because uh, we really wanted to meet this, like the jazz icon, Wynton Marsalis. And we, we snuck backstage and like played for him and introduced ourselves. And the next thing we knew, he was like, I'm writing your letters of rec. I'm going to help you get into schools in New York City. And we both got full ride scholarships. And until York. then, we didn't really know we were going to pursue that. Yeah. Wait, and that's so we... gutsy to be like, we're going to sneak backstage and we're going to play this jazz icon a little a little horn and see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're going to get a full ride scholarship. <laughs> we yeah, did that a lot. Did, that wasn't a unique well, situation. I mean, that was the most unique situation. I but... would say that was the first time that it ever happened to us. So we were like, oh, this is a successful approach to do things. Because right. it had just paid off so much for that. Um, wow. Right, totally. That is how it happened. And yeah. so after that, it was like, oh, what other situations can we get ourselves into that will pay off like that, that we never would imagine would happen? Mm -hmm. So how and did y'all ever even get into horns? Like, how are you ever both like, like that, to me, that's not like the most common thing to be like, oh, I'm a kid growing up in Nebraska. I think I'll try out a horn. Like you're jazzy. Yeah. How did that happen? It was just as simple as like, it was that time in like middle, like right in middle school or elementary school where like you had to pick, do, an, pick instrument. an instrument and we didn't want to do strings. So we did, and it was like, I don't want to be a drummer really. I don't want to like, we could have- Yeah, I don't this, know why we picked Like one. I didn't want to be, like I thought about clarinet because like Klezmer and being Jewish, but I was like, eh, not, we can't really do much with that. And I started on tuba. So right. like, which is, I don't know why I did that. I. I think back into like the psychology of it, like I clearly wanted attention of some kind. Because <laughs> the tuba I, like, is not <laughs> like that instrument. I don't know why. The tuba then, is really a statement maker. It totally. is. It is clearly. It was that. And it was. It was pre glasses. And time, it was like so. you're. You can only really. The make... tuba was the glasses before the glass. <laughs> About and to say the, the, <laughs> the glasses really make... scratched that tuba itch for you. <laughs> it did. It did. And you can like only subconsciously make that decision if like your parent has a minivan. Right. It's like there's no way you get a tuba around, or you get like the trailer hitch thing on the back. And just, yeah, like, if your mom's driving like uh, you know a Honda coupe of some kind, like you're right. not playing tuba. No, you're no. playing like the flute at the no. most. <laughs> but no, we and then like later I transitioned into trombone. Yeah, but like which, later, just because I wanted to be in the like the jazz band and the tuba wasn't really like a thing in that. Right. And 
Yeah, I mean, what what else would you say about that time? Like, no, I just think it came really naturally to us. I think we had really good music education. Yeah, we caught on to it. We must have been somewhat natural at it, or at some part of music. Uh, and then it was just and like a language we learned really quickly. And then when when we started like really showing interest in that, our parents were like, "Oh, oh let's we'll take you to New Orleans. Yeah, let's we'll go to New Orleans. Let's yeah. go to New York. Like let let's go to like experience what you know jazz is. Yeah, and then and so." When That's we were so cool working. that they were so like willing to like be supportive well, because, and I think because they were not very musical, they were like, maybe this is their like maybe we should try to see how far they could get. Yeah. I mean, and also like our parents loved like Miles Davis and loved yeah. them, and, and that was always on in our house. So our dad did, our mom was not yeah, right. So she is now, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, well, I don't even know. No, she she definitely uh, yeah she is now because of all the people that like right. like you have to go listen to them they're so good like she knows right now. yeah but I don't this, know this by the way is a um 1984 jazz fest poster behind me oh my, oh my god, god. Oh. actually I'm looking at it it is amazing yeah it's very cool yeah. my aunt um had it hanging in her house for years and that was the year I was born. And when wow. she passed, I'm like, that's all I want is that Jazz Fest poster. Because I used to I used to go to Jazz Fest. I mean, I haven't been in a while now, but I love it so much. And she loved it. And anyway, but I love this poster. I promise that was not a plan for oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, like, oh, and I'll put my jazz poster. Poster. Oh my God, are you a producer? I couldn't tell. <laughs> I'm like, oh, hey, let me rearrange so I can make sure that they see I'm jazz. Oh, yeah, that's that is not where that poster was. Yes. <laughs> but no, I mean, New Orleans is, you know. It's where music and food are at the center of a city. It's right? amazing. It's there. It's the life there. So yeah. Completely. Lane Jazz Fest is amazing, and um, yeah, I mean, we we obviously love New Orleans. And oh, we, it's the best. I always, yeah. whenever I send, like, whenever someone's going there, I have like an email that I send everyone with like my recs for places. But I mean, I always, I'm just like, just stop and like stand on the corner, get a daiquiri if you want. But like the music that you'll hear just like on Frenchmen or like just anywhere on the streets is like some of the best. So if you can just go sit there and chill for a second, like you'll love it. Out of like all the musicians we've played with, like the ones from New Orleans are the best hands. Oh, they have know, something like, that they have something yeah. that cannot be duplicated. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like Mr. John Batiste. Yeah. John. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. John. Like John is New Orleans. He's when, New Orleans. When, yeah. When we like, started playing with John, it was like, it was so, it was so, the, do you remember, like, I mean, we haven't talked about it in a while, but do you remember, like, when we first started playing with him, it was all about, like, because when we were in college, it was like, it was like all about, you know, the chord progressions and following the rules, and then he was kind of like, playing with him, it was like all by ear, and I just felt like he, it was such a communicative yeah. art form for him, it was like, he's going to look at you in the eyes and play, and then you knew what he was telling you. Yeah. Right? Oh. And then he, he'd just point to you, and he would give you your turn. And I and just it, remember being challenged so much musically. And I, we always say, like, or recently we've been saying, just because we've been thinking about it more, how much musical education came out of playing with him as opposed to like, oh, yeah. actually. Oh, playing. very cool. Yeah. yeah, I met him actually probably like nine years ago now. He was at a friend's house in Beverly Hills doing one of those love riot marches. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah we used and to. they were oh. like, do you want to come? I know you like New Orleans and jazz. I'm like, sure, I'll come, whatever. And then he was so cool. And we like met and I loved him and he was awesome. And then he'd come back in town and be like, Hey, I'm doing a march. If you want to come, like I'm coming. And I had to go march around Venice, you know, I'm like, yep. he was just the coolest. I'm sure he still is. I don't keep that much in touch uh, yeah, with him. I have, I have like uh, recollections of this because yeah, it, was when, played, it was, was when he, it was when he would go to LA yeah, and, he, and it was like when he was first starting, we were still LA, playing with him and man. he was playing people's houses. Yep. Dude, yes. That vividly. He was like doing something with Quincy Jones. And he'd be like, I'm going to be back Sunday and we're going to do it in like union square. Yes. Yeah. Um, that is so it feels like y'all moved to new york and like all everything just it was like boom it's happening it well and it, and it definitely felt like that coming from nebraska and it was just like oh this is what new york is i guess but we also, didn't know also culinarily like right around the time i would say we had moved we started playing with john and about a year after that we met zimmer and right. zimmer was just saw and was just like oh kind of God. like blown away and like we just taken him aback a little bit and yeah, had, tell me about that. So tell me, so you're talking about Andrew Zimmern. Yeah, yeah. We were, How did that happen? Like y'all are like his little people. Like, it, it, we were performing, we were literally going back to Nebraska to perform. And he was there for some reason. And we like met him and we were just, he was like, what is your thing? And we're like, <laughs> we're jazz musicians. And he was like, no way. Like I didn't expect to meet like New York jazz musicians in Nebraska of all places. 
And we were just like hanging out and eating food. And he was like, oh my God, like you're coming to my house for Thanksgiving in a month. And we were like, uh, well, well we have to ask our parents. parents. Like, <laughs> we'll be there probably. Because the thing is, our we were going to Minneapolis. Our, our mom's family's from Minneapolis. So we were like, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't like weird that we would be in Minneapolis for Thanksgiving because we were like, oh, we'll go to our grandparents, then we'll go to Andrew's. Right, we could do both and get away with it. So Andrew lives and was living in Minneapolis. Yeah, he still still does. does Okay. And so for anyone who doesn't know, which I can't imagine if they're listening to this, they don't know who he is, but like (laughs) Andrew is obviously a Mecca in the culinary world. I mean, he's done TV about it. He's, he's been a chef. Like he's, I mean, what would you, how would you describe Andrew? bizarre foods like yeah he's a culinary explorer he always has been ever since we've known him which was he was in the middle of bizarre foods when we became friends and you know we well we actually should explain how thanksgiving went because that's it pretty much marks how our relationship went from that oh i can't wait being like the nice jewish boys that we are we went to uh barney greengrass and we were like hi what's andrew zimmern's like order when he comes here and they're like, oh, he always gets this, 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 and this. We're like, we'll take it. And we flew it to Minneapolis for him. Wait, what is the place that you just said? Barney Greengrass. It's like an oh, Upper West Side, like Jewish, like locks and bagels place. Pl- yeah. type place. Oh my God, I love it. And so you had that shipped to his house. No, we just brought flew it, with, it with, us with us to Minnesota. Yeah. <laughs> and we like froze it and brought it over there. And we just knew like, all right, he's, he's Jewish. He was originally from New York City. He would eat at Barney Greengrass. Yes. We're going to go to Barney Greengrass. Uh, Greengrass and do like a little bit of an investigation and then just bring it so that when we go to his house because it's the second time we're meeting him yeah like, we have that like wow like you went above and beyond yeah kind of. these guys yeah yeah these guys and so we go there thinking like oh he has this, this big thing oh by the way we were still keeping kosher at this point right oh okay so yeah. how long how old are you at this point uh 17 18 18 oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah and you're going to thanksgiving at andrews and Rin's house i can't yeah okay. in, in a city we don't live in like we're flying there <laughs> um and we so go yeah we, we, get- we go we anticipate like this is going to be a big he does like a big thanksgiving bash and like it's the holiday where it's a chefy kind of food thing so he this is his holiday he like invites a bunch of people yeah we go there and it's literally andrew his wife raisha his son noah and raisha's two and raisha's parents there were oh. like eight of us in total. Yeah. And we're yeah. like, oh, okay. This is intimate as hell. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Was and it he, awkward or was it like you just fit right oh, in? No, no, no. We, like, we, 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 we were like family from the get-go with him. Oh, and my God. So we were, but we were taken aback. Like, this is a very small thing. Um, and he basically, like, tries to convince us to do food television. Well, no. Yes, but it started as... We had told him when we first met him that we kept kosher right. and that our dad, who was like very strict kosher, said that if we ever met Andrew or Bourdain, that we could break Cosher. keeping kosher to try stuff with them. Oh, but my gosh. Andrew Your dad had already met. said that? Yes, yeah. for years. We, we'd watch the shows together. He'd be like, if you ever meet one of them, you can, you can break And we had told kosher. Andrew that when we first met, met him. So when we get to his house. There's Joe Stone Crab, Himona Barico, everything that we'd never tried. And he lined it up for us and he wanted us to try it because we said we wanted to try it with him. And then he, based off of our reactions of what we were trying for the first time, he was basically like, yep, I'm starting a production company and we're going to do a TV with you. That is so cool. Like what an experience. I mean, first of all, just in general to eat something with a chef of like that caliber and like be able to experience because you're you're when you're eating something with someone who understands it and loves it as much as you it's such a cool experience but then for him to be like oh no no no, you're giving me an experience and now i want to do more with you that is such a cool I mean, he literally curated like our first take like tasting of, of some of the best food on planet earth yeah. and like wanted our genuine reactions to them and then i mean we've traveled all over the world with him and eaten everything with him yeah. and it, it's never not an incredible experience to eat with him. Uh, when the three of us are freaking, together, we, we nerd out I mean, stuff, the, the, the three of us at Dim Sum, you don't even want to be around. We're going to clean out that entire restaurant. I 100% want to be around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's probably one of our favorite things to do with him. I'm like, in fact, next time Andrew's here, if y'all don't invite me to Dim Sum. Oh, yeah. oh, oh my God. God. We go to San Gabriel Valley and eat everything. everything. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. He, How he, fun. He has, yeah, he has some favorite But I'll, I will say, like, playing music with some of the greats really cool eating with andrew wherever probably up there still as yeah. one of the coolest things you can ever do i mean he's just but he's we've such done, a genius but dude, we've done everything with him we've eaten like 
really shitty food in the right. middle of nowhere oh, right. on a road trip together yeah. and ha- like had an amazing time and then we've been to like you know oh yeah I mean, millennia he'll literally he'll literally go to a gas station get twizzlers put them in their microwave then go like he'll he warm up all. his twizzlers <laughs> oh my god that's the best thing i've ever heard and also makes so much sense also the best part about him was like oh we're gonna take him to this spot he's never heard of it been there a hundred times yep but you yeah. can't you can't stump it well, no, but the other reason why like us and andrew got along instantly was we we both had these the craziest appreciation of the highest and the lowest of food yeah like we love being challenged culinarily and trying things we've never had and you know seeing what grand Atkins is doing but then we'll also be like, let's go to like a drive, a truck stop, and yeah. just go ham and just get a bunch of yeah. stuff there, and we'll have the best time doing that too. And he's the same way. So has he produced? Did he produce all three of your shows? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's talk about that really fast. So y'all, you yeah. obviously are these amazing jazz musicians, and we love it. But then you've kind of been like moving into food since meeting Andrew, and you've had three shows. Mm-hmm. Well, and just for the record, like we told him no like four times about doing television because we were we were playing with John like we were we were just kind of getting where we were wanting to go musically right. and we we're like I don't want to confuse like what we're doing right. and it was like well what if I sold it like if it was sold and like I had a start date for filming would you do it and we're like yeah that's a different story we would probably do it right and then- because y'all were touring yeah. with like John Legend and working with John Batiste and yeah. I mean you've who name the people you've been like you've done music with it's incredible Diplo, Snoop Dogg, like yeah, uh, Chance the Rapper, Lil Baby, yeah. um, Robert Glasper, Sheila E. I mean, yeah. just the biggest names in music, no big deal. I mean, well, I mean, but we're horn players, so it's like we we just love that we get to play with all types of people. Right, that is so cool. And so then, obviously, Andrew comes along, and you're like afraid that could maybe take you off of the trajectory that you've already been building up. Not afraid. We just had no idea that that like was something in the cards for us. Like, right. Like, we were we were just like it was so well we were like so not what we had thought we were like out of left field yeah at that point we were like we're jazz musicians like this isn't really interesting to other people we were just like this is interesting for us so then him to be like oh i'm andrew zimmern and i think everyone would be interested in what you had to say we're like oh really they would be right yeah you're like why how huh yeah Yeah. like we kept kosher like what do we have to tell like what do we have to say Right yeah, out. what did your dad think of you breaking kosher with Andrew? I mean, he did give you permission, but what did he think yeah. about? Oh my God, Andrew called him and like apologized. Yeah, <laughs> but it was it was it was it was funny. It was sure. amazing. I mean, it was like you know, if you were ever gonna do it, like this is the way it's gonna happen. If it's gonna, if are it's gonna your parents happen. fine with that now that y'all are not? Kosher? Oh yeah, 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 yeah they totally. are. Totally. I mean, they, they. My dad still keeps kosher. My mom is like kosher, but sometimes not kosher. And we're just completely. And every once in a while, when we eat something like together, and we're like, "This is freaking incredible!" Like, I will disown you if you don't try it. Well, th- that's how we'll get him to try. Yeah. Try it. yeah. Yeah. Okay, I have so much I want to talk about. Oh my gosh. Okay, so before I move on to the TV shows, actually, how did y'all like for your dad to say to you, like, you can break kosher if you eat something with Andrew or Anthony Bourdain? Like that to me means that you grew up in a food family, right? I mean, like. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah I mean. Both of our parents traveled internationally for work. Like we were left on our own a lot and they were traveling. And that was amazing for food in two different ways. When they were traveling, we'd, they would always say, what do you want us to bring you back? And we'd always say something to eat. Oh, cool. Yeah. We're in Nebraska. We're like, I don't know. We don't really have that many cool restaurants here. So bring us back something we can eat. So they would always do that. And then when we were on our own, we were always cooking for ourselves. Oh. So like we, we were like totally getting our ch- like cooking chops up. And then we'd get to try all these foods from all over the world. And then later on, we would travel for music all over the world and be like, I've had that before and I've had this before. You guys have to go here and go here. And then, and then we'd also kind of, when we get home from that, we'd recreate the things we had abroad at home. Right. And that's sort of how a lot of the shows have happened is like the way we approach food is very simple. It's from like, it's like playing covers of music. Like, yeah. if I appreciate the original, I'm going to appreciate my cover, or people are going to appreciate my cover of that. Right. It's like, but, and then also when you're doing the cover, you simplify certain things to make it more approachable. That's what we do with food. Right. That's so um, cool. I remember when my, like, when my mom got back from working in India for like two months, she brought us back like five different musical instruments right. and like different spices and different, I mean, that was we just were and so lucky was, how we grew up that way and also our aunt so cool. uncle, our Taiwanese so like we were eating bubble tea when we were like three so like that's something that has also been cool to see 
be more approachable everywhere because like we've but it's had so a- watered down now. Wait, yeah. why were you eating that? Our aunt and uncle are Taiwanese. Oh, cool. And our parents like had lived in Taiwan with them for a little bit. And like, so that we were, a lot of these things were already on our radar. Right. Um, and like we were eating scallion pancakes and boba and kelp yeah. and whatever at like six. That's and so cool. Was- I always say it on here, but like, I'm just going to say it again. I did not grow up like that. Like I grew up in the South and it was delicious food as y'all know, and we'll get to that, but like it's delicious food, but it's, I wasn't, I wasn't experiencing, like, I don't think I had sushi until I was a senior in high school and it was delicious, but like, I, I was very picky about it. I'm like, is the, is it fried shrimp in there? Like, right. is it okay? Can I do it without cucumber? Like I was like a freak, right. you know, like I didn't know anything and moving to LA is where that happened for me, but I was 22 when I moved here. Y'all grew up like that, which is so interesting. And your parents had an appreciation for it, which is so cool. And they, and like, they loved watching No Reservations and Bizarre. Oh, yeah. It was like, we watched that. We'd eat, like, if we knew they were going to go somewhere we had seen, we'd be like, can you get that one thing he got? And then they'd bring it back. And then when we moved to New York, it was It was the perfect storm. Like, it was. It was just all these things happening simultaneously, like, that in the middle of our like musical discovery and like all of that it was just crazy and so and then being in nebraska too it was like this really safe space to like kind of figure out what you wanted to do and like performing in places and no one wanted to leave there too like yeah so it was just a lot of a lot of things are your parents still in nebraska they they're half and half palm springs and uh yeah oh that's fun yeah yeah, oh, so we cool. see them a lot now because we usually never, we used to not see them for yeah. like extended yeah. periods of time. What do they think of like this life y'all have created? Like, not only do you have the jazz, you know, they 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 really fostered that for y'all and like got to see you be successful with that and continuing on. And then also this whole new sub food category of your career oh, yeah. that's taking off. It, you know they're the most supportive parents like yeah. uh, we wouldn't have, we could never do this if we didn't if we didn't grow up but it definitely grow. was hard to explain like the there were a couple of years where it was like we were definitely we were basically telling them like you just got to trust us because i think we know what we're doing but it's going to be weird for a little bit right like, like where they'd be like well, you don't get a consistent paycheck we're like no but that's not how this war- industry works. yeah right so it was like explaining how it works. And there were times where Angel would have to call them and be like, they need to leave school for six months. And they'd be like, no, they're not. And he'd be like, uh, Oh I yeah, think, they are. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. you should rethink that. And then, and then eventually they, they come around, but like, yeah, like Angel would have pretty like straightforward conversations with them. And that is like, wild. Hey, like this is a really rare opportunity for them to take advantage of this time and blah blah blah. They can always go back and finish up that, but they need to do this now. And like, it's it, also it cool because your parents were a fan of him too. So it's it's not even just like it's this mentor that you've kind of fostered in your own life, and now the mentor is yeah. calling your parents. They're like, oh yeah, hi Andrew, who we watched on TV before you met my twins. <laughs> right. Oh, but they were used to that with like all the musicians and stuff. Right. Yeah. That's so but, true. No, they, they were, were like, still, they, course, were, they were probably like, of course, Andrew Zimmerman's freaking calling me. Yeah. And telling them that my but kids they would, gonna... they would still be they would still tell them their concerns about it yeah, yeah. They, 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 i appreciate you doing it this almost this. it almost didn't matter who it was they're like well, yeah it's they're my me. kids and they're yeah. gonna do this they're like um with all due respect andrew um <laughs> my kids are in school right now <laughs> right but they, they're like what, what are they telling you that's yeah. not true but no there were definitely growing pains at that point of our career for sure yeah like, I, it was like you kind of have to trust us but then at the same time it was like we were trying to prove to them that we knew what we were doing because we right. were doing it and, and also it was like when school was like getting in the way right of- then school would call and be like why are they gone for so long and we'd be like oh we're filming something and they'd be like but you're in music school and then we're, yeah and then we're like well we're leaving to play with batiste and they're like who was that and we're like when they didn't know who john was we're like listen i don't think this is gonna work right right now. Yeah. wait because weren't you both in school on a scholarship yeah, yes. but, yeah, on full rides. Yeah. And they were really, they really leveraged that against you. Yeah, they do. They, and, and we did not feel comfortable with that, frankly. We talked, so, we, yeah, we talked pretty openly about our gripes about how our musical education, like college, college. work. It, I don't think we could have had a better high school and middle school music education. But, but. The, the, the collegiate music industry is a moneymaker and they don't do anything right. They, all they want is to get like you in there for four years, make their money and kick you out to the curb. Right. And I always say in music, when you're learning music four years and getting a diploma does not make you a musician. Right. They're, they're literally just k- taking your money, screwing you. 
Well, also, if you're being asked to go on tour with these huge musicians who are already in the industry and can help you do what you're ultimately in school to do, you'd think they'd be like, oh, wow, then yes, go on tour with John Batiste. But the music school was like, why are they taking you? You don't know anything. You know right. what I mean? Like, that's like they, we haven't taught you everything yet. Right. Exactly. And, you know, it, they were like, well, we can't take, in, in my mind, I always took it as they thought they couldn't take enough credit for it yet. Oh. Right. And then when we were playing, we were like Warren Buffett's house band because he was from Nebraska. <laughs> of course and, you were. And like, we would leave to go play for him and they'd be like, he's the wealthiest man in the world. Why is he paying you? And then at, on the same time, they'd ask us to get them into a restaurant they couldn't get into. Oh, these no. Are, these were our professors. So did y'all finish? We, yeah, did, we did finish, we did. but it took a lot of leveraging. <laughs> yeah. We made some deals happen, I guess, is the only way to put that. Yeah. We're we like, we'll get you into blah, blah, blah if you let us pass. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, if, if only it was less quid pro quo than that. It was, it, I mean, I, it, I don't even know if we've ever openly talked about it, but we did take the president of one of the schools to a, a, a tasting no, no, menu no, no, by Grant no. Ackett's and sort of made that deal happen during that day. Oh my God, I love y'all so much. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure your parents are thrilled that the two career paths you chose are like the most like unstable, could be yeah. the most unstable, unreliable. Right. It's yeah. like, oh, culinary and music. Right. right. Let, let's combine the two riskiest career yeah. paths possible, put them together. Yeah, but look yeah. at you. Yeah, but I mean, we're always the way we are is we just do what we want to do. Yeah, and we we don't we don't see if anyone else has done it because we just do it. And I think the being that way has just always benefited us in the long run. Yeah, so if no one's done it and we we think that that's what we should do, we do it and we make it happen. And then other people usually end up following right behind us. But it's just the way we are. Like I love that in our comfort zone, so we just go for it. Yeah. So who taught y'all to cook? If you were cooking when your parents were out of town, were you teaching yourselves? And is one of you like the go-to for this and one of you the go-to for that? Have you ever seen Julie and Julia? Uh, yes. I like there. It was like the ghost experience of like, no I'm kidding. Um, no, um, I, we, it was just trial and error, frankly. It, like, and we watched a lot of, you know, Food Network growing yeah. up. Yeah. Um, I would say like there i we had some skills like just by pure cooking for ourselves and like we were recreating dishes from a young age right but based on flavor we always say like plating by ear like as musicians we play by ear but when we're cooking by ear like that's our way of being like there's no recipe we're going to taste it and be like oh there's not sour or you know like there's not a texture there's this isn't working right so it's like that was our way of doing that instead of musically it was for food right um, so we kind of learned a lot and then andrew would be once we started like once we were friends with andrew our nerdiest text conversations would be like oh well i'd add a little bit of like greek yogurt to that because that would accomplish both things with one move right and yeah. then we're like oh okay so now we're picking up on right, these things because i remember when we were like working on our chicken tikka recipe that we were we were using like heavy cream and he's like but if you use greek yogurt you don't have to add as much lemon, lemon juice. juice and we're like i didn't fucking know that was a thing totally. i love it and right and yeah, so like that was an, just an amazing thing to have yeah. as like a resource. And we, yeah. yeah. So are y'all creating your own recipes and like do those live oh, somewhere? Yeah. All the oh, time. Yeah. This is yeah. how it happens. I'll come up with a wild idea and then he has to figure out how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, and I'll be like, I'll be like, no, that won't, that won't well, work. Well, the Trapumpkin yeah. was, that was so our, dumb My dumb. wildest recipe I ever came up with was something called the Trapumpkin, where you roast a chicken steaming inside of a whole pumpkin. And we get made fun of it all the time. Like every all the year, make every fun. year in the fall, we get like eaten alive by this idea of be, being in existence. But I just thought, how crazy would it be if you like browned a chicken, but then roasted it inside of a pumpkin, and then you accomplish the side dish and the main dish and in the, one vessel? And the chicken fat gets cooked into, into the, the pumpkin, and it was it's really juicy. Yeah. So I'm assuming it's very good. It is, yeah. but it's very time consuming, and it's a whole thing. And and. Literally, very get, practical. like while we're trying to roast this chicken, we get roasted alive by everybody who ever sees this dish. Because right. what like, they're like, that's the dumbest thing because you're it's taking so much time, or what's the big issue with it? No, no it's more of the absurdity of the concept itself. But I, I have to say, every time we make this dish, which is like once a year, it's freaking it's amazing. Not even once a year, some years we were too afraid to try it again. It's so good though. Oh my it god, really that's so good. Good. like yeah, I would say specifically the pumpkin cooked in the chicken fat is amazing. Yeah. 
Oh uh, my god, that is so funny. That you're it, pumpkin. We like Lindsay. This is just how we are. We, we <laughs> look at something that hasn't been done, and we're like, why hasn't that been done? And we and, and why can't we figure out how to do it? Again, we don't approach this as chefs. We approach it as musicians and creatives. So we're like, like we don't look at it as like, does this make sense to actually do? We're like, does this is this even possible? And right. then we make it easy because we're not chefs. We're like, this can be done, and we'll make it as lazy as possible to get it to, to happen actually i love right. it cut out all the, the bs like all the like chefy words that don't actually mean anything that and just like try to make it easy so i have a question when you all started so you started in tv your first show southern road trip was the southern road trip okay that's what i thought yeah. so yeah. what made y'all want to do a southern road trip being from it, nebraska it was, the, it, it, was it, it had it literally it was like the, I remember when Andrew called us. We were it was in the middle of Yom Kippur services, <laughs> and it was I was like, "What the fuck?" And he knows not to call that. And, yeah. and he and like and he called, and I step out, and he's like, "Yeah, so Travel Channel, uh, well, the Southern well, Road Trip." He he just was obsessed with the idea of us two being in like a goofy car traveling around the South. That was no, he fixated on. He it. wanted us to be fish out of fish water. out of water. Yeah, and he had this idea, and I think it was it was a great idea, and I think it was like probably a mandate from Travel Channel that was like it needs to be in the south. That, yeah, and and then he just kind of like made it totally sticky for us. Yeah, and like there, and we were playing music with people. Like I remember playing. We uh, played with a queen of the Gullah Geechee tribe. That was amazing. That was that so was cool. unbelievable. Yeah, and then we wow. also played with a uh, a man who was in a wheelchair yeah. playing banjo. Mm -hmm in the backwoods of like some very like a 20 person town yeah in, in, in what state in south, in south carolina. carolina and and then and that was really fun like it was an amazing like he was great at banjo and we like i'd never really totally. done a lot with a banjo before we vibed out on that and as jazz musicians like we're really good at just being thrown into an environment like right. sure. making something work out of that right because that's like <laughs> literally what jazz is <laughs> so <clears throat> And the same thing happened with Beats and Bites, too, was, right. like, we would bring these people together that were people that we knew separately. It would like, be perfect together. Like, uh, well, I guess, like, Robert Glasper and, and Leah, Leah Cohen, Cohen or something. Yeah, and I yeah. saw, I actually saw both, um, I've seen Michael Voltaggio's episode of that yeah, and Brooke Williamson's. That All the rappers love oh. that one because yeah. he was obsessed with Smino saying tomato cheese for some reason. <laughs> That, and also he made a, a Henny slushy, which yes. completely Done. blew Smee's mind. Yeah. And we are like, leave it to Michael Voltaggio to invent some crazy thing that no one's ever done before that's just going to like completely hit an audience. Yeah. Like where it should go. He's the coolest. And everyone's always like, what's he like in real life? I'm like, he's as cool as you think. Before we moved to LA, we met Volt in Aspen for food and wine. Oh, right. Okay. And like, we were like, oh, he's the LA chef. We're probably gonna move to LA in the next year. Like it would be amazing if like we hit it off. And uh we were like instantly like this guy is like the Miles Davis of cooking. Like he is so there's no rules to him. Yeah, he's, he's gonna do whatever he wants and he's gonna make it work. And he doesn't he, he is the most creative. He we is like really a musician his, chef. We were yeah. really drawn to his creativity. Really and drawn. When we first moved to LA, we were probably at his house like every day for like the first six months. Oh, yeah. I love that. He would just cook for us or we'd order something and we'd play video games or we'd go to concerts together. There's so many terrible stories that are amazing. <laughs> it makes so much sense to me that Michael Voltaggio would be in your in your world like that. Like I can see him gravitating towards y'all and I can see why y'all would gravitate towards him. So I'm like, that just makes so much sense to me. And we get to feel cool because we're such like we're not we we are rule breakers, but like that's not our persona, and that yeah. is our persona. Yeah. So do, we do feel you remember, cool. Do you remember when we took him to uh, Glasper's birthday party? Oh my god! We yes. took him to Robert Glasper's birthday party. We're this is like the second week when we're, we moved to LA, and we were like, "Hey, we're gonna go." He didn't know who anybody any of these people were, but I'm like, our friend Robert Glasper, really iconic musician, come to his birthday party, and we walk in. And like, I guess it was just like us, Don Cheadle and Dr. Dre and like at this table. And Dr. Dre just comes right up to Mike and goes, what's up, Mike? And we're like, how do you know Dr. Dre? Like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Like, we're, we took you here. How do you know any of them? Yeah, but, but like also you, I'm sure you weren't surprised either because you're also like, no, no, first, no. you know and Dr. Dr. Dre. And Michael's just as cool as any human being can be. <laughs> so you're just not surprised. And LA is kind of that world. It's like, right. you know, everyone wants to meet each other and spend time together. And just people who are good at things. And, you know, right. yeah. you know, like everyone has mutual respect for the art 
or yeah. creating other people there. Yeah, that's why I think it makes sense. Like Michael is such a um, an artist with his food and like a craftsman, and so always pushing the envelope. And so I'm, that's why I'm like, yeah, that makes total sense to me that he would be like attracted to y'all because you're like these, you know, exactly like you're saying, you do things your way. He's probably like, yep, yeah, radar goes off. Those guys are cool. Totally, yeah. And I never thought about and, that. And, and, and it's it's funny to us because it's like in we if you look at like our like lifestyles and personas you'd be like how are they remotely compatible as friends right literally we're like triplets yeah i feel like it makes so much sense so tell me southern road trip what was your favorite state uh well honestly it was primarily in south carolina did we go to georgia or we we did we went to like two other states but like our production hub was charleston oh i don't know why i thought that y'all went through um what am I thinking of? I thought y'all went through like four different states. No, you did not. We definitely did. To, like we did, but like it, it was kind of hard to discern what wasn't South Carolina. Because, <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, because we like there were a couple times where we did have to like stay somewhere that wasn't Charleston due to like an early filming right schedule, and like we would stay at the like, Econowa. The Econowa. With cockroaches in every room. And I, I just oh. remember like yeah. gonna happen. And then we'd all like, none of us could sleep. So we'd all just be sitting in the Waffle, Waffle House, House at like three in the morning, morning, just getting ready to go and back. Then, to... and, and like, this was our first time filming like anything. anything. So they were just all like, ha ha ha, you're the ones with to be on camera and like smile in like an hour. Oh right? my <laughs> gosh. Well, I mean, Waffle House, what a Southern delicacy. Oh, we, oh yeah. I mean, we just talked about Waffle House. We've like on road trips gone hours, hours, hours out of our way to eat at uh, Waffle House. As yeah. you should. Oh yeah. That oh, is so funny. It, it sucks on the West Coast because they're so sparse out here. I no. know. Where, uh, is there even one? Where's the closest one to us? The closest one I think is Denver, Colorado. No, 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 no. There's one in. I'm looking uh, now. I'm looking I now. think there's one in like Albuquerque, maybe. Oh, oh no. wasn't there one in Phoenix? We were just talking. Oh no, was that Waterbury? No, we. So there's in none in California. California. No, no, there's no, none no, in California. I don't think so. Yeah. Waffle House, nearest Waffle House. Guys, why don't you open a Waffle House? I just franchise one oh, for us here no in LA. Let's do that. <laughs> Well, I, think I they, would be honored. Well, but... I think they try to keep it southern, but for some reason, like you know, you can they can get persuaded to franchise in random locations. Well, that was like Chick Fil A was like that, and now it's all over LA. Right, and uh, also Whataburger is moving more west than they've ever really done. Yeah, because they started in Texas, I think. Yep, they're yeah, hundred percent. And uh, oh, there's well, there are Waffle Houses in Phoenix. I was right. There's like five. Okay, so that's probably well, our closest. I'm four hours right now for Waffle. House. I would definitely go. I would. I would. You're like I'm in. <laughs> oh my god, I would order just like the fattest stack of waffles. You I know what's funny? I don't think I've ever actually had a waffle from Waffle House. I always get a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich with sandwich scattered, and covered in chunk yeah. browns. No, 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 no. You get the no, 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 no. on the Texas toast thing. Those freaking waffles. Okay. And all of my friends that love waffles, they're like, they love the thick Belgian ones. Uh, I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? There's nothing more perfection than a Waffle House waffle. It has that like t- little bit of crisp that you kind of want it to be yes. like, when you're bi- like biting into it, but also it's extremely fluffy I, and it's this thin. Oh, and I do like, like thin. Yes, yeah, I and like they're, blueberry waffles. And there's too. cinnamon, like there's kind of like a cinnamon thing going with it. I want to buy their machine. You can so bad, but they're like fourteen thousand dollars. Oh no, my they're not gosh! That bad. They're, yes, they're so they expensive. That bad, I'm looking again. <laughs> I literally, I literally want to be at an auction next door to like a Waffle House dude, that's just want, closed. Dude, if we if we bought a Waffle House waffle maker and we put it in our LA place, people would come over for breakfast now. I would come over all the time. Yeah, I would be like more than happy. That's a, that's a reason to get it too. We should. Get I think it. you should get it. And then everyone can experience Waffle House waffles. But it's like, then I, what do I do? Can I buy their batter online? Like, is that a thing? Okay, I'm well, seeing- Well, maybe they'll tell you. I'm seeing a double burner one, like a two gridiron ones for 2,700. Oh, That's boys. still absurd for a waffle maker. That's, that's doable. It's not out of the realm of possibility either. Listen, let's just all go in on it and then yeah. I'll oh, just yeah. I'll Here just expect you to make custody. me waffles. <laughs> Drunk custody of the waffle ass waffle maker. Except for I don't want custody. I only want to be able to like reap the benefits. I'll just come to you and you can oh, make me waffles. Okay, that's sounds reasonable. Yeah, that's totally. sounds reasonable. I'll just have I'll make that batter like once a week and have it sit in the fridge. Yes. Oh yeah, like that's that, that should be an overnight batter. I'm like, you can have full custody as long as I can have visitation. Oh yeah. my, <laughs> no, oh my God. you're such a reasonable negotiator. Oh my god. <laughs> what are
what is the charity where you where you were working with Bob Saget? Oh, oh yeah, Urban Urban Foundation. Foundation. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, whoa, that was like you all said the exact same thing. Oh, sorry. It's it's called scleroderma is the disease, um, and someone in our family, like immediate family, had uh, was, was diagnosed with scleroderma, and like it is a really scary disease. Like, there's no cure for it. What it, is that? Yeah. Yeah. It's like uh skin it's like an it's it's really hard to describe because if they knew what it was they would have a cure for it like right right right. um it's kind of like a skin thing but it's not it's also like everything within your body like kind of starts deforming oh right? okay um kind of basically is what that is um, and it's genetic but it really only yeah yeah it's it's, and it, it runs in like the family like it's oh. like it's yeah um and a like a few of our cousins have it too um and we were like literally at lunch with bob and kelly when we found out about our family member that had that so you knew up. him before that yes. yes and we were like oh my god like we, we didn't know, know what, what this is and he was like are you kidding me i'm the president of this foundation my sister had this and passed away from it and we it was just like one of those things where like you couldn't make that up right yeah it all. was pretty weird and pretty weird. um and then he like took over like yeah he was like i'm gonna get it. i'm gonna like schedule the doctor's appointments i'm gonna like he would call like them. email us at like three in the morning and he was like still working up oh yeah. my gosh like, he so would nice. like talk to the doctors and he would like set everything up and he'd check in on us um and just an absolutely outstanding human being um and then and then we had him on the album i was gonna say i heard him on the album which by the way i'm loving pornography like it is such a good album thank Thank you you. appreciate that so much yeah really it was it was really tough because he we had him record for it and then he passed away like a couple of weeks later oh my gosh it was like we were gutted from that situation like he recorded in december and then in january January, like, like the first week of january and no one saw that coming and it was really fucked up. Right. And we were like, we need to honor him and we need to because like, no one knows what he did for us. Right. And we and we were just like, it doesn't do any good if we just like don't if we just keep that in. Like yeah. that, that he should and be he honored for. And I mean, I don't like saying what people would have wanted, but like I think that in the time that we'd known him, it was the Scleroderma Foundation was extremely important to him. Right. And if we didn't do anything to benefit the Scleroderma Foundation. Like that would have made him super happy, I think. Yeah, um, and so don't some of your proceeds of your record yes, go there? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't know the exact percentage, but like a, ch- a good chunk of the album goes to the Scarlet Foundation and Bob's name. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and that was something that we wanted to do, just to like thank him for what he had done for us. Yeah, I mean, things. and he was just one of those guys where it was like he would always. It was a he was a yes, like you could count on him. Yeah. Hey, I need this, or like, can you help me with this? It was always like, yeah, 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 of course. Well, I imagine like also finding out something like that, like anytime you're, you know, dealing with someone close to you being sick or like having any sort of like issue, and someone is there to be like, I know about this and I can help you, like that's just like a level of comfort that you just like can't pay for. Well, it was like kind of like ideal, like everything you'd want to hear. Yeah. When you're finding this out. Yeah. Um, and just that, like, you're not alone in that. And, yeah. And from him, like, who is such, like, a parental-looking, like, his persona was, like, he was like, a father figure to yeah. America. So oh. it was really, like, kind of weird in that way, too. Right. Um, yeah. So anyway, but... Anyway. Well, I'm sorry for your loss, but that's, it's so kind, like, to to honor him in that way. Thank, thank you. you yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Are you still friends with his wife? I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah. Kelly, yeah. yeah. Kelly's amazing. Oh, awesome. We, and she's a huge foodie. Yeah. We're always talking about food. Oh, we, we, we like, we lived like fairly near them for a while and we would just go with Kelly and find like new fun places. And also them. she's from the Midwest also. So. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so we love, love going that. back to the record. Mm. I was like, I didn't, even, I don't think I even realized that it was, there was written word. I mean, there was spoken word and I'm like oh, yeah. listening when I saw y'all post that it was coming out. I'm like, oh, I'm going to listen. And I'm listening to the first one. I'm like, is that Andrew Zimmern talking? And then I'm like, wait, what? And then I'm like, wait, is that the girl from Vanderpump Rules? <laughs> I'm like, this is the coolest record. Thank, Thank you. you. Like we, we, we came up with this idea, like 
during COVID, we wanted to, to figure out how to collaborate with our friends, with our so. friends, but like while we were all isolated. Right. And we were just like, hey, send us a voice memo and like we'll turn it into a song basically. So we It'll, had a yeah. bunch of people send us that and we were like the ones that it worked. Uh, and like and we wanted, we wanted and Andrew needed to be. Yeah, and, 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 and of Andrew, course. Andrew can explain, like we are the intersection of music and food and Andrew, that was like kind of Andrew's genius from the beginning. Yeah. So like, who else better to explain that than Andrew? And he has such an animated voice. Um, it's so good. Thank yeah, you, and, and he like, when we showed him that he was, it was awesome. Yeah, I bet. And he got pretty emotional from that too. Yeah. Well, I'm sure it's like, he's like, obviously seen something in y'all from this whole time. You've now become like family and then you honor him in this way, which is like, just so cool. So I want to ask you really fast, you know, now that you're West coast, well, when did you move to the West coast? Like 2017. Oh, okay. So you've been here a while. Yeah. I mean, maybe to- even 2016. I can't yeah. Maybe remember. even earlier than that. Yeah. Maybe it was 2018. We moved when we were doing Bravo, the Bravo Beats and Bites. Oh, actually, let's go back to that. So you've had the Southern Road Trip, Bravo's Beats and Bites, and now you have Takeout Twins. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Um, How fun. Yeah, very fun. And And we have a lot of other projects happening right now, too, that are kind of things we never thought we'd be able to do, frankly. So they're awkward. Takeout food is like my wheelhouse of cooking. So I just love doing it. And I've always thought for years that my some of my recipes were like way better. So I just love well, like, it goes battling. back to our whole thing of like when we're on the road, we're we experience a city through you know whatever we can get when we're performing there, which sometimes is a sit down meal, a lot of the times it's not. Yeah, and so when we get home, it's like, man, I really like that, you know, uh, Michian rice noodle soup that we had in sure. China, and it's like, okay. What and now, now I just have to like make order some Szechuan peppercorn and figure out how that right. works. And I'm like over here in my kitchen, like putting like flour and rice, blending it together with salt and like turning it into a noodle and turning it into like a. And then it's like we'll have our oh wok and we'll do the hot pepper stuff in there, and it's like, well, basically we we are on an endless like crusade to find them to recreate those things yeah because we can't order them here and we want to you know we want that and it just goes back to our childhood of like our parents being in whatever country and us right something with that right. so full circle kind of with that so is takeout twins that's on food network yeah mm-hmm. and are y'all you're actually recreating like your favorite takeout is that what it is oh well, and yeah. we're ordering a dish and like do and then doing like a blind taste test at that yeah cool. yeah yeah, yeah. But I, it, it, I think in the next couple of months we're announcing something else, and we'll we'll get into that at some point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's some cool, there's some exciting stuff. Is yeah. there anything coming up that you can tell people about, or is it just tell them where they can go watch everything else? Right. I would say right now go listen to Hornography right. on Spotify. You can find us on Instagram at Potash Twins, um, and go back go watch. Uh, Takeout Twins on Food Network and Pizza Bites, Pizza Bites on Bravo. They're all still on there. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and obviously Southern Road Trip is a Bizarre Foods um, presents. presents thing. Yeah. So you find Bizarre Foods, but, you can find that. But there's some really crazy stuff yeah. in the next few months that will yeah. be yeah. Unreal, unreal that we can't even believe we're doing. And I'm so excited. Yeah. 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 Uh, we're us too. We're very it's excited. really wild. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so the best is yet to come, but there's there's still enough out there to keep you satisfied for a little bit. But oh my uh, god, we can never yeah. have enough. So I'm like, oh, thrilled. Well, thank you. I'm thrilled. Yeah. Um, tell me, who do you love? Like, if someone was coming to LA or Palm Springs, wherever you want to, you know, since you since you have a place in both, um, where would you tell people to go eat? Like, who are you loving locally? We always go to San Gabriel Valley. We're really like Chinese food is our yeah. I want to do that because I've never actually found anywhere that I'm like, but if I'm craving Chinese food, like I don't know where to go. Like I just don't yeah. know. Or like yeah. dumplings. Yeah. Like, just don't know. It, it, it just depends because like most places are just like Ch- American Chinese food now yeah. or takeout restaurants. But in San Gabriel Valley, like we, Andrew, we go with Andrew all the time. And uh, the number one Shanghai seafood village is the the spot. And we, we yeah, we've taken some but, cool but people it, to that. It's, it's cool. cool. Of, it reminds me a lot of when we're uh, in Asia, right. where most places are specialty in one thing. Right. Yeah, like, yeah. So like when we go with Andrew, like we go to one place for Peking duck, 
and then we'll right. go to the place next door for the seafood, and then we'll go somewhere else so right after that. Like noodles or dumplings. Right. Or, and then okay, we'll so y'all else. eat the way that I like to eat. Like, I'm like, we don't have to have the whole experience at one place. Like, yeah, if we, the appetizer and the cocktail is going to be good at this place, let's do that. Let's have this here. Let's go here, here. Dessert can always be anywhere. Right. right. Like, I want it to be like a four or five hour eating experience. Me like, too. I don't, I don't want to be sitting there bored because I just don't want to be sitting here anymore. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Um, tell me really fast. Like, I always ask people this, like, what are you loving about your life right now? And then what are you hoping to still achieve? Like, obviously I'm sure y'all still have a lot on the bucket list. Like you said, you have a lot of things, exciting things coming up, but what are you loving about like where you are right now in this moment? Uh, I love that we're getting to do things we've never done before. Yeah. Um, I love that a lot of doors are being opened for us. Um, and it's things that we never thought like as jazz musicians would happen to us. Right. Yeah. So that's yeah. really, really exciting. And, it, and every day it's something new. We're like, oh my God, that's happening. The, the thing um, that I think we've always loved is just like meeting new people all the time. Right. We love meeting people. Um, and just like, you know. <sighs> connecting to people. Yeah. And just, we love the travel. So it's like, we like that that's happening again. Yeah. A long time that that wasn't happening for sure. And it's so cool that like both of the things I keep saying profession career, but like both those paths are like such connecting paths. Like mm -hmm. you're bridging the gap between food and, and music, but it's also like, that's those two things are such communicators on their own, you know, like sit down right. and have a meal with someone and you experience a whole new thing, sit down and listen to music with someone. Like, I love going to a concert with someone that I'm like close to. Cause you, you leave their feelings so much closer, you know, it's like, oh it brings God. you together. Yeah. And then coming from like the actual, like technicality side of both of those things, the way that like we would write a song is the way a chef would compose a dish. Yeah. And, right. and the way you'd run a band is the same way you run a kitchen. It's like, yeah. we are saying the same things in different ways. Yeah, it's really uh, cool. And it's just a similar... And there's so much more to tell on that story. Like, totally. It, yeah, I, what are you still, like, hoping for? I'd like to talk about that in more in depth with people that understand that kind of level of conversation. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, on, like, the food side definitely there, there's so many things that i want to do and a lot of them have to do with the intersections of music and food yeah like, whether it's us on tour and showing the stories that make up the you know the bonds that we build when we're on the road like that sure uh and the stories behind all of that um or just you know like what sort of what we were doing on beats and bites which is really diving into what it means to be a creative in different art forms i would uh, one thing that i would like to do that we haven't really done that much is i'd like to like judge Food. oh yeah me too like yeah i just think that because all of our friends are chefs so i just like i kind of want to be the one to tell them if their food we is haven't done bad. a lot of judging and it's like, like i'd love that i'd love to be like not understanding something uh volt does <laughs> right volt and, have, does. and it literally be like can you can you bridge the gap for me here right yeah and i get sold on that that um, is so funny right because just the way we we kind of are is like we're around creatives a lot usually i can see the vision if i can't see the vision it says right, a little just, bit and maybe I, I can, that can be explained to me, but if it can't, that says everything I need to know. Yeah. Totally. Um, cool. Yeah. So that would be fun on the food, on cool. the food side for sure. Yeah. And then musically just, you know, keep, keep uh, doing what we've been doing, which is work in different genres with different types of people and right. perform with, you know, all over. And we are so lucky we get to do that and just more of that, more of the fun things we get to do really. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. What do you think people's like, um, at the most common misconception about you? Like, what do you think that is? Or do you think that people, do you ever feel like, you know, Pro mm. probably that they think we're the same person or right. like they think we're like, we're, our, our personalities are so different. Um, and obviously like being twins, that's just something that happens, but yeah, um, I would definitely, I was definitely going to say just like, being put into like the twin category right or like twin being a twins is your thing it's yeah like, that is remotely our thing we right that is literally just like we, we just are. happen to be twins yeah right. that's it's literally the same with like discriminating against people that look a certain way it's like sure. you're gonna say that it's like, i wouldn't but, say but it's then, the same but no 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 it's, it's no but then it's just like <laughs> when i i would say there is a capacity of that happening yeah Right. Well, it's right. like, it's almost like, I see what you're saying, where it almost feels like an, any other stereotype where you're like, oh, they're just, they're twins. 
Right. right. You're like, okay, but I'm also this, that, this, that. He thinks right. like this. I think like this. Like, like, I don't want to be known for being a twin. I want to be known for like the my things music, we do, the music or the food or whatever. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I was never solely identified as a twin, I think, you know, because we're not identical. So I've, I can't really put myself in your shoes in that way. And a lot of times living out here away from her for the last 15 years, I'll say something about my twin and someone's like, you have a twin. And I'm almost like offended. They don't know that. Right. But I'm like, oh, why would you know that I just work with you? And I don't, you don't, you know, like, why would you know that? But yeah. So it's like, mine's almost like the, a different side. I'm like, I need you to know that I'm a twin and she's awesome. And she's my best friend. And y'all are like, everyone thinks we're just twins. You know, it's funny. It's like a whole other part of your life. They have no, completely no idea. No idea. Yes. And it's so yeah. important to your identity too. Yeah, it is. That's the thing. It's like, y'all are not upset that people know you're twins and like label you as twins. You're just like, it's not everything. Right, no, yeah. we, we love being twins. Yeah, so. I think y'all are so fortunate that y'all are, you know, identical and don't have all of that, um, what I assume comes along with looking alike, you know, which is like that, that kind of like competition. But instead y'all have the same interests, you're best friends, you live together, work together and you're, it just seems easy and enjoyable. And I feel like that's just such a nice life that y'all have created for yourselves. It's, it's we're lucky. We know we're lucky. Yeah. By like the one plus one equals three. Yeah. Thing. And right. it yeah. just always has been like that. Mm-hmm. It's so cool. I love that. And they have the same passions. Like that's just so exciting that like you didn't, what if one of you only liked food and then the other, and that person was like now friends with Andrew and taking off on this whole other thing and you're just chilling, you know, like, oh, that's right. interesting. Totally. Yeah. A lot of like weird stars aligning. That's the way we see it kind of. I love it. Okay. I'm going to do what we do. It's called quick fire five. Okay. Yes. Okay. So you have to just answer whatever comes to your mind. What if they're different? Yeah. Maybe I'll, maybe it needs to be like, yeah. Which one of you wants to answer first? And we have to explain why. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Let's do that. Cause you want to be able to think you don't want the other one to think. Okay. I'll let let you answer first and then I'll say mine. Okay, but you can't change it based on his. I won't change it. (laughs) Okay, last meal. Actually, so yeah, okay. Last meal before you die. Uh, I would, I was kind of just thinking about this. Um, I would probably go chicken tikka masala with a huge thing of naan. Really? I was going to say like a big ass steak and a lobster or something. (laughs) That's what I would do. I love it. Okay. Um, oh wait. So actually, when you answer, say who you are answering. Okay. Oh, Adiv chicken tikka masala as the uh, servitor. Okay. And then favorite city to eat your way through. Chicago. That's a good answer. Uh, you didn't say D after that, by the way. You're not D. playing by the rules. D. Um. It's supposed to be quick fire. So. Ezra, quick fire. I know. I know. Uh, Shanghai. S. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, Voltaggio said Chicago as well. Well, I, okay. To be honest, I agreed with Chicago, but then I thought a little bit more and then I thought, I just think Chicago, you have Alinea at the top of it. You have, oh, the, you it's have the best place for pizza. Yeah. You have Al's beef. You have girl and the goat. You have, ev- you literally have everything there. I think it's, Ro- we just uh, went to Rosemary. Yeah. With, uh, for, Joe Flam's restaurant. Yeah. And amazing. We, I love Joe and I love that restaurant. Yeah. Oh, nice. I love that. Okay. Um, tell me next like dream person to collaborate with in the food space. In the food space. I want to do more with Bolt personally. Okay. Like, I mean, I mean, obviously I would say so we're saying too, dream person, but I mean, somebody like we've never, or so, is it somebody we know, but have never done anything? It with? can be anything. So Ezra, if you're like, I want to do it with Altagio, it's like, great. Yeah. I really would love to do something wild. With I'm going to say yeah. Emerald. Really? I'm going to say Emerald. Nice. Yeah. I guess New Orleans. I love New, his, and I, he, I love that he had a band on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Love what a guy. What a guy. Yeah. Um, okay. Favorite cocktail, wine, drink, beverage. Doesn't have to be alcoholic. Aperol spritz. Love it. You love Aperol spritz? Love Aperol spritz. I like uh, tequila. Last one. Do you okay. have any tattoos? No. no. I've never which, is, which is such a good question to chefs. I yeah. know. Chefs always yeah. have tattoos. I have never, I've just never been interested in a tattoo yeah. for myself personally. Yeah. I'm assuming you have a tattoo then? I don't have a tattoo. Oh! 
Well, and it's right. personal. It's like a personal thing to, to, and chefs, they always, and they always do those knuckle ones, which yeah. is. Like, yeah. yeah Rones. Rones. The Rone has the yeah. Rone has the yeah. Yeah, it is funny. I'm like when I was coming up with like questions for this, a friend of mine was like, Well, you have to ask about tattoos. Totally. Yeah. I'm I like, oh it. yeah, that's such a kitchen thing. It's such yeah. a kitchen thing. It just is. Yeah. This has been so much fun. I'm like so happy that we were able to do this. I'm so happy y'all said yes. Like oh, I'm just yeah. like thrilled. Yeah. Well, no, this we, was so full circle because it was like eight or nine years ago that we spoke first. Before. It really is. And now yeah. we're talking about so much more. Like y'all's career is just like. Phew. It's going to get way crazier. I'll, I, like, I, like, the things we can't talk about are like, I don't even know how we're doing. I it. can't wait. Yeah. So tell people where to follow you. Like, do you have a website? Tell them your Instagram, your socials, whatever, so that they can keep up and see what's coming up. We have a website, but you can get the most updated information on our Instagram at Potash Twins um definitely check us out on spotify the new album pornography is something that we're super proud of and honored for everybody that was a part of it that helped us make it uh it was a really incredible experience to work on throughout covid but it, it just came out like a couple i mean a month, a month uh, probably yeah. around a month and a half ago maybe um i would say those are the two things to put on your radar right now and just to stay tuned for all the exciting things coming out so cool i love it all right guys thank you so much of course thank Thanks, you so much lindsay. for having us lindsay of course in general just stay in touch with us right like oh you can't get rid of me now <laughs> we don't want to <laughs>